Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, you learn about AWS services. Today, we are going to talk about building an ATL pipe line which handles ingestion of multiple files into the S3 bucket. You might not understand the topic completely by hearing the title, but I'm going to explain the problem statement and then we'll talk about a solution and of course a demo of the solution. I'm building this particular uh, tutorial because I got multiple requests from my uh, viewers about this problem and I have also seen this problem in my uh, customer domain. Okay, so let's get started. So suppose you're trying to build a pipeline and the pipeline is, uh, is this is an example pipeline for instance. Suppose you're using a glue job to bring data from JDBC data source to S3 bucket. Suppose you bring data to say raw area of the S3 bucket where you simply keep your data in the raw state, in an immutable state. Then you are using another glue job to transform this raw data into curated data where the data is ready for consumption. Now this whole pipeline works like a charm if you are, if you are dealing with a single file. So, what I mean by that, that this glue job, when extracting data from JDBC data source, is simply writing a single file over here. So it's writing a single file in the raw area. And generally, if you're building an event-based pipeline, then you will raise uh, um, S3 event when this file is created or updated. And then you raise a lambda function or call a lambda function on the S3 event. This lambda function will simply call a glue job and this glue job will simply transform this file from this S3 bucket to this S3 bucket. So it, you see it, it works like charm when you're dealing with a single file. But you face challenges the moment you're dealing with multiple file. And let me show you in this example. Suppose this glue job is extracting data from JDBC and loading to S3 bucket and suppose it writes three files, three as an example, yeah, three files. And it is absolutely uh, uh, like, uh, it's absolutely common scenario because when you try to bring data from JDBC data sources, depending on what kind of file format you're selecting or what kind of row level partitioning you want, creation of the multiple file is very common. So you get three files into an S3 bucket. And because you're writing three files to S3 bucket, it is going to write three S3 events, which is going to then call three lambda function, which is going to then trigger three glue jobs and those three glue jobs are going to process those three files individually. So yeah, looks like it is working, but the challenge is that these three files are processed individually by the glue job, and we want to avoid that situation. If your requirement is like that, that you want to process your file individually, this is absolutely fine scenario. Your glue job will run three times in parallel and each will simply handle the particular file you want to handle. But the way the customer wants is when these three files are created to S3 bucket, they don't want to reach three S3 events. They want a single S3 event which would call a single lambda function, which is called a single glue job execution. And then this glue job should take all these three files together and process it and write three file or one file or how many files it wants to write based on the transformation. So you don't want each of these files to be processed individually. You want your, your first glue job to write as many files it has to write into your S3 bucket. Then you want a single execution of your glue job, which is taking going to take all the files together in, in the processing and then do the transformation and then write to the target location, one file, two file, depending on what kind of transformation you want to write. So this is what you want to 
uh, this is how you want to desire and that's where the challenges come because these S3 events are hooked into a file level events or object level event and if I'm writing three objects or three file I get three S3 event and that creates the challenge for this whole pipeline and that is what we are going to solve today so moving on so before I move on to the solution part, let's try to extend the problem the same way you are getting um, uh, three files raging the S3 event, you're calling lambda function. And here in this case, I'm triggering a glue job to run rest of the pipeline, but you can actually call a glue workflow or you can also call a step function, which is simply orchestrating your uh, glue jobs or crawlers. And, and crawlers you mean yeah so this problem can also be extended where post the data ingestion you're not triggering a glue job but you're actually triggering a glue workflow step function the same the solution which I'm providing is going to work for this extended problem also where post ingestion you can also start a glue workflow or step function and of course a glue job depending on how your pipeline is built. So this is a bigger problem which you can solve using the same solution which I'm going to provide. So let's talk about the solution now. So if you look at this whole pipeline where this glue job is writing this multiple S3 files and I want to get a single S3 event, we should call a single Lambda function, we should make a single execution of my glue job and then this glue job should take this whole file set in one go, transform it and load it to the target location. In this whole solution, if you try to find solution for this whole pipeline, the key location is this S3 event. Because if I can find a mechanism, a method to raise a single S3 event for these files, then I am good. The right now the problem is the S3 event is an object level event. And if I'm writing five files, I will get five S3 event. If I'm getting 10 files, I'll get 10 S3 event. I want to avoid that situation. I want to raise a single S3 event so that when this glue job comes, it simply um, processes all the new files in one go and transform uh, and loads to the target location. So this S3 event needs to be handled in little smart way so that we don't end up executing multiple glue jobs. So how do I do that? Let's take an example. And, and this example I'm going to show you as a demo as well. So suppose you have got a JDBC data source, which has got an employees table. And in fact, I got, in fact, in my example, I've got some five records. Now I've got a glue job, which is simply taking this data, this table uh, data, and then write it to this uh, raw area uh, uh, in uh, some data lake bucket and employees folder. And I'm simply loading data as a parquet, so it's writing five records, five files for five records. Now, uh, so this uh, job code which I'm writing is simply, uh, so I, I have five records in my employee table, it's going to simply write five files. Um, and I'm using parquet file as a format here. So each record will be like one parquet file per record. And if I try to raise an S3 event on these files, then it's not going to work. Like we have already discussed that as the problem in the problem statement. So what we are going to do, we are not going to raise the S3 event on these file writes. So let my job code write these files but i'm not i'm not going to raise event on write or 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 update or like put or post of these files so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create some kind of token folder now this name could be anything but i am i am i'm simply um I'm simply creating one more folder in the same data lake. So in the same data lake, I've got employees folder where this data comes, this employees data comes over here and I have created a token folder over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my job code and this job code, what it's going to do is that first it's going to write my files to my employees folder. So in the employees folder, it will write my files. Then it will also write a token file 
into my token folder and again guys token i'm taking just name over here um, i'm using the word token here because it has just a token it has no meaning to be honest it's just a just a placeholder just a way to tokenize the thing so this job code um, i'm extending uh, by writing additional token file once my actual data files are written and now i am going to hook in my s3 event to this token file but this token file is a single file so the way my job code will be extended is that it will first write the data file then it will write a token file on the right of the token file a s3 event will be triggered this s3 event is going to call the lambda function this lambda function is going to call the single execution of glue job and then this glue job will simply take these files and write to the target location so that's how i am going to solve the problem so i am not raising this s3 event on the file right because if i do that i will get three events five events 10 events 100 events depending on how many data files i am writing i am going to decouple my s3 events from my file write so i will write my data files first then i will simply once i'm done with my data file writes i'm simply going to create a token file and my s3 events now will be hooked into this token file so basically you are going to do uh, make the code changes or development in three places first you are going to cha change your glue job code to write a token file once your data files are written that's the one place you're going to make the uh, code change or uh, job change second you're going to change your s3 event to look into this token file only so s3 event is going to particularly look for this token file and this event will be raised only when this token file token file is written nothing else and the third one of course is your aws uh, lambda which is simply um, yeah going to look into this uh, uh, token uh, this s3 event and raise the glue job this glue job well nothing changes here it's going to work as it is as it was it was it's supposed to work okay so let's go through these three changes one by one the first one is your glue job code is writing a token file how do i do that it's pretty straightforward we are going to use uh, in this case i'm using python as an example but you can use in, in a, like if in a glue job you can write code into python only in fact so, uh, or python shell so of course you have to use python so i'm going to use python uh, boto3 libraries uh, to write the token file so this is a code snippet and i'm going to show you the whole code as well when i write my um, when i write my uh, when i build my demo uh, for you so here uh, is my glue job generally in a glue job what you do that uh, you create a s3 sync then you write a data frame to uh, that s3 sync location and then you simply commit the job and that way you say hey my job is done i have written my data file to the target location but we are going to extend that code and we'll write these three lines of code first we'll import boto3 uh, then we'll create an s3 client and then we're simply going to put an object into this token folder remember the token folder in that i'm going to simply create a token file and generally i'm giving the token file file name same as the next job or next workflow or next next step function i want to call uh, and this is my buckets and this is uh, some dummy data i can i can put anything uh, I, 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 in fact i can not put anything and still i'm okay with that so i'm simply creating this token file into this s3 uh, s3 bucket um, bucket location and this is how i'm creating my token file into a particular folder pretty straightforward three lines of code nothing more than that so that is the change you have to do in your glue job to write the token file now comes the second part where my s3 event has to look in look for this token file only and this is how the configuration look like i'm configuring an s3 event i'm configuring it for put, put and post event for the object creation uh, in the object creation i'm putting put and post by put by put uh, by making put and post you're simply saying that i am um, uh, when, whenever my uh, token is written uh, first time or updated then you raise the event because uh, yeah you run this glue job multiple times so first time the token will be created next time you run the job your token will be updated and whenever the token is created or updated i want to raise the event 
okay and then i'm simply saying the ray, uh, this event will simply um, look into uh, this particular prefix this particular token folder and look for this particular suffix or this particular uh, file and if only this file is updated or created then only i am going to raise the event otherwise i'm not going to raise the event and one thing i have not shown over here once this event is raised i am going to simply call the lambda function and i will show you that when i build the demo i forgot to put the screen uh, shot of that over here now having done then that now comes the third part which is the lambda function and this lambda function is pretty straightforward what it's saying is that this lambda function is getting called on the raise of the s3 event so what it does it simply look into the uh, uh, look into the key which key has raised the event then it's simply creating a glue client uh, using boto3 so i'm using python as exam example here but this lambda function you can write in any language you want to write your uh, code in then i'm simply saying that okay if if this value is a uh, token glue job glue curated job then simply start a job glue curated job now there are a couple of things you can do over here i have have in a way hard coded everything here which is not preferred which is not recommended so one way could be that you write your token file name uh, um, uh, name like I, I like if you look at that this job name is in my token file name uh, so i can simply do a kind of st string parsing to uh, extract this glue job name and simply avoid any kind of hard coding i can do that as well or more simple thing you can do you can simply create a kind of a dynamo db table where you can put your uh, token name and what is the next thing you want to start like glue job or workflow or uh, like uh, glue workflow or step function and then you simply uh, you extend your business logic that when you get this key over here you look into that dynamo db table to find out what glue job or glue workflow or step function to start and you simply use that kind of uh, client to start the processing for the next next task but in this case this is how the code look like if i want to start a glue job now since we also talk about the bigger picture where you can have scenario where you want to start a glue workflow or step function in that case code will be almost the same but little changes so like if you want to start a glue workflow you will simply create a glue client like this you will look into your token file and then we simply start a workflow associated with that so this token file and workflow mapping again you can put into some kind of dynamo db table so don't you don't have to do any hard coding over here uh, but i'm just showing you a simple example to keep it simple so simply you can start the workflow like this a very small change into the code and you can hook into the workflow or another example if you're trying to start a step function in this case you can see the same way i can create a step function client and i can simply start the step functions i can do that as well so you can see here this example can be easily extended to not only you start a glue job once multiple files are ingested but you can also do a workflow or um, you can also do workflow or step function okay so that was what you need to do to um changes you need to do to make this whole uh, demo work this whole solution work let's look at a demo so in this demo what we are going to do that i have an rds database where i'm going to I, there's an employees table which has got roughly five yeah five records actually i'm going to create a dojo injection job which is simply going to write uh, these files into a raw area of my s3 bucket so raw folder in the s3 bucket and it will going to write i'm going to use a parquet format uh, uh, so it's going to write some five files one file per record which will raise an s3 event and on this s3 event i want to then call this uh, dojo curated uh, job which is going to read this data from the uh, employees uh, thing employees folder and do a simple transformation and handle all the file at once to my target location and again it's going to create some yeah five records over there and in this case i'm simply doing two transformation once i'm selecting certain fields uh, from uh, between raw to curated and second i'm converting parquet to json format just to show the 
little transformation. So we are going to build this demo from the scratch and then yeah, you will, you will see the whole solution working. So let's get started. So here is my AWS console and here is my RDS database where I have simply created a single employees table and this employees table has got some five records and it has got some three three columns and I'll show you uh, uh, in fact uh, if I if I go uh, yeah uh, let me show you in fact how it looks like so if I go to my glue console uh, in this glue console I have simply cataloged my RDS database table so I have done uh, so I have created a database called Dojo DB and in that Dojo DB, uh, I have created a Postgres public employee. So the, the table into my RDS of my RDS database, I have simply cataloged into Glue. And if I click on that, you can see the schema of the table. Uh, it has got uh, first name, last name, and employees number. Okay, this is how the schema look like. Total five records. So it's all good. Now what I have done is that I have created an um, uh, Dojo data set as my like like you can say data lake location where I have got my employees raw folder where I am going to keep my raw data when my first glue job runs and at that point of time I will use this whole event event mechanism to run the second glue job which is going to simply process my raw data into my curated data. Uh, I have created a script folder over here uh, which um, uh, I will use if I need to store any kind of script. Uh, hopefully not but I generally try to creep one folder like that which I can use for any custom script uh, storage. Uh, if you look at this my, my raw folder is blank at this point of time. Uh, if uh, look at my curated that is also blank at this point of time. So um, let's uh, do first thing first. Now that uh, my S3 buckets are ready, my uh, my source data is cataloged. Uh, let's create the first glue job, which is to fetch data from my um, RDS database and write to my raw uh, raw S3 bucket. Uh, so I for that I will use AWS Glue Studio. Uh, and then in that one, uh, I'm going to simply go to the left hand side, jobs. I want to create a new job and I want to create a blank uh, canvas. In fact, let's create a blank canvas. Let's close this. Okay. Uh, let's try to use my source. So my source is actually a PostgreSQL server database. So I'm simply going to use that. Uh, it is looking into my catalog for my data. So my uh, database is Dojo DB. Uh, in my catalog, glue catalog, and my table is Postgres public employees. And you can see my source data I have configured. I can see my output schema, which shows my first name, last name, and employees number. Next, I'm going to simply, uh, since it is my raw data job, so I'm not going to do, um, yeah, I'm not going to do much uh, transform, any transformation here. I'm simply going to write it to target. So I simply click on the target and say, I want to write it to the S3 bucket. And in this case, uh, say, okay, in what format? So say I want to write into uh, Parquet format. And then I want to uh, simply uh, use Snappy as a compression mechanism. Um, I want to, uh, which location you want to write the data? So I want to write it to, uh, if I come down all the way, oops. Okay, I think I need to go to the next one. Dojo data set. I want to write it to the curated folder. So simply I want to write it to the curated folder. And then something I always do, and I always say whenever you're writing a data to a data platform, you should always catalog it. So I'm simply going to use the building mechanism into Glue Studio when writing the data. I'm saying, hey, simply create a table and catalog it. And I want to write my data to Dojo DB. Uh, like I'm cataloging my data to Dojo DB and my uh, target target table name is, oh, sorry, my, um, my, um, my not target, my, my Table name for when I'm trying to ingest my data is simply employees, employees raw. So what this is going to do is that it's simply going to um, fetch data from this data source and write to the S3 bucket in Parquet format in using snappy compression. Um, 
which is kind of default compression we're using parquet then writing it to my employees s3 folder and then i also want to catalog data because uh, cataloging is important in data platform to make data discoverable and searchable and I'm cataloging it to Dojo database and employees uh, and with the name employees raw table so I'm all good with this particular one what I can do I can simply provide some job details so I can first give my job name and I'm saying this is my Dojo injection job okay and I am role, I have already created something called uh, an I am role for myself, uh, which I can use with the glue job. So I'm simply providing that I am role. I'm using um, PySpark, um, then I'm using glue 3, the latest version using language, uh, yeah, Python 3. Um, rest everything I'm keeping by default. Only thing I don't want to retry because any, if any error comes, like in this, for this demo, of course, in actual production, you want to retry because yeah, you want to make sure your jobs completes. But here, if I get any error, I want to know right uh, right away. Uh, so I'm going to simply make number of retry zero just for the demo purpose. You don't do that in production and you simply save it. So now your, um, uh, your, your job is created. Now I, Simply, uh, if I go to my jobs, I can see, uh, yeah, one one job is created for me. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to write the second job also right away. Uh, the second job, which is going to read from employees raw. So remember, remember when I created this job in, I created an employees raw table in Dojo DB. It's simply going to read the data from employees raw in Dojo DB and then write it to the curated S3 bucket and also catalog it. So I'm going to create a new uh, new uh, job. Oh, in fact, sorry, before I do that, okay, my mistake. So if I go, uh, if I open this particular job again, um, it's writing my job to, it, it, like if you look at the script over here, this script is 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 doing well. It's simply reading from my uh, from my data source, uh, from my data source, and writing it to the target location. It's not doing anything else. But remember, we have to write the token file. We have to change this code so that it can it can write the token file. So I'm going to make that change. And for that, what I'm going to do that I'm simply going to create on this edit script. So I'm simply going to create on this edit script. It says, okay, when you edit the script, you cannot use visual anymore. So yeah, of course, I mean, like, I know that I can, I, I, if I go to script mode, I don't see any uh, visual diagrams, uh, which I'm ready to compromise. Okay. Uh, so here we go. We come to this. Um, yeah, we, this, this, this is how the code look like, which is generated. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make small, small changes into that right? and, and similar to like what I showed you earlier. So I'm going to simply import Boto3 first. And then I'm simply going to um, create an S3 client. So I imported Boto3 and then I'm going to copy paste another thing. So before job commit, actually, I can, I'm simply going to actually write two more lines of code. And what this is going to do is that it's going to um, uh, create an S3 client, then it's in the Dojo dataset uh, bucket, it's going to, in the token folder, it's going to create another file, Dojo curated job, let me copy paste it, and then um, I'm simply uh, going to uh, put uh, this as a, as a content of the file. And that's it, so I'm writing my, so I extended my injection job code to, injection job code to now write a token file. So now I save it. Cool. So this is done. Now I'm going to create the next job. Uh, so my next job I'm going to create using a script editor and I'm simply say, let's create a new script with boilerplate code. So I simply create my next job, uh, which is simply added some boilerplate uh, code over here, which I'm going to replace. So the way I'm going to replace is I copy, um, yeah, I copy uh, this thing over here, uh, a sample code, and I'm going to simply write it here. And I'm going to walk you through this code. Uh, 
Uh, and all this code, uh, everything I'm doing over here, I'm going to provide you as a GIF file, uh, and, and the link to that GIF, uh, GIF file is, uh, is shared in the description box below. So if you want to make use of that code, you can definitely make use of this code. So this is how my uh, curated job uh, code look like. Pretty straightforward, guys, nothing. I, I imported my library, get created my glue context. Then I'm going to, in Dojo DB, when my in data ingestion happens, it's going to create employees raw table in my Dojo DB as a, as a catalog. I'm going to simply read it from the catalog. Okay, as simple as that. Then I am creating a transformation and I'm creating a select fields transformation. That's I'm going to select certain fields only. And the fields I'm selecting, there are three fields I know, but I'm interested only in first name and last name. So simply I'm going to select first name and last name as fields. Then I'm creating my target location. So first I create my uh, sync and my sync location is employees curated folder. Uh, in S3 type, in S3 bucket, I want to update my database. There is no partition. Um, um, there's no partition key I'm, I'm in. Um, and then I'm, I want to update my catalog. I want to create my catalog uh, when the data is written. Simple. Then I'm providing my catalog information. I'm saying, hey, when you update my catalog, uh, right in my Dojo DB, simply create a table called employees curated. Uh, okay, so that was employees raw. Now this one is employee curated. Use JSON as the format. And this is the data frame. This is the data frame. Uh, simply write that data. Sorry, this is the, uh, I think my data frame is this. This is my data frame. Uh, and simply write that. Uh, oops, sorry. And, uh, this is sorry. This is a data frame. I simply write the data frame over here, and simply uh, job commit. So I am done. So code is pretty straightforward. I'm going to also provide you this code. Um, so I simply provide my job details. So my first job detail is job name, and my job name is actually Dojo Curated Job. Then I simply going to provide my role. And in this case, I'm going to use the same role which I use for my data ingestion job. It is using PySpark, Glue 3.0, Python 3, all looks good. Let's change this number of retries to zero because I'm using it for demo. If it fails, I want to fail it fast. Not in production, of course, you want to have retries to make sure that you um, do complete your job. And I save it. So now my uh, both of the jobs are uh, ready. My both jobs are ready. If I go to my jobs, you can see my my ingestion and my curated job both are ready. Now let's create the lambda function, and I'm going to um, yeah for that I go to the lambda function console. I want to create a lambda function. Um, I want to give this lambda function name call say start glue job. Okay, and then uh, this is going to use um, Python 3.9, uh, and then let's change the execution role. Uh, I will use in this case something called Dojo Lambda role. Dojo Lambda role. Okay, so I've created a role for uh, which can start the job, and yeah, it has that kind of permission. You simply create the function. The function gets created. Now I'm going to change the code over here and uh, the Lambda code will be simply changed by the same code I showed you in my presentation. So this is my out of box code, which I'm simply going to replace with the code, um, which I showed you in the presentation. So it's going to simply uh, look into S3 key, uh, create a glue client and if that is a dojo, dojo curated job, uh, then you simply start the dojo curated job. Yeah, simple. So simply deploy it. So my my lambda function is ready. Now I am uh, ready to actually um, actually I'm ready to configure my S3 bucket. So if I go to my S3 bucket location, I'm going to my parent location of the bucket. There's no token folder here. Just I want to make sure guys, there's no token folder over here because my f when my ingestion job runs, then token folder is created and files created. So I'm simply going to um, go to properties 
in my bucket and then I'm saying that okay let's cut this off and I'm saying I want to configure uh, actually uh, okay there's already one event I'm going to delete it okay fair enough and then I'm going to um, actually oops where is the yeah here I go yeah I'm going to create a event and this event I'm going to call say s3 pipeline event uh, so which prefix or uh, token uh, folder it should look into so we are saying it should look into my uh, token folder so you simply look into my token folder and in that token folder look for uh, this particular uh, file this particular file dojo curated job and then the event I want to configure is for the um, object creation event only put and post that is more than enough um, and then I come down all together uh, and then I simply say I want to handle it and I want to call a lambda function and that lambda function is actually start start glue job yeah here we go start glue job so uh, start glue job is the lambda function so my configuration is pretty straightforward uh, on the dojo data set I'm configuring an s3 event which will look into uh, this particular um, file in this particular uh, folder um, and then it will raise event on both put and post and it will simply if that event is raised it will call a lambda function and this is the lambda function I simply save it so I'm good guys I'm perfect okay now uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run my injection job and once I run my injection job it will write my file to the uh, raw location and then this my uh, this whole configuration should start my curated job but only one time and then uh, you will see um, and then you will see uh, the output created in the at the target location so let's uh, start my injection job and right now for demo purpose i am starting this injection job manually but you can again put some automation whether you want to raise it uh, based on schedule or something like that uh, but for demo purpose i'm going to start my injection job manually and then we'll see how this whole pipeline runs it's going to get take a couple of minutes so let me start it and let's wait for this whole pipeline to finish So I have started the job and in fact uh, if I go to this job and if I go to runs I can see my my job is running. So I'm going to wait uh, till this whole flow finishes and once uh, that is done I'm going to um, then then I'm then I'm going to uh, show you the output. So let's wait uh, till the pipeline finishes. Okay, so it took a couple of minutes to finish the uh, processing and you can see that my raw data is prepared which is simply, oops, go back to tables, we're simply um, pointing to my raw bucket location and then uh, my employee data is written to my employee uh, location. Um, if you guys go to my S3 bucket and if I uh, go to my objects, Um, you can see here if I refresh it I should see a token file you can see my token file is now created this is how the token file look like simple um, if I go to my s3 raw I refresh it you can see here um, total eight files were created so it looks like I had eight file eight rows not five rows so you can see here total eight files so you can see my ingestion file was not single but eight files were uh, created but if I go to my glue job so if I go to my glue job so you can see in uh, raw eight files are created but if I go to my glue job and if I see my uh, my execution of uh, curated data it happened only once so it didn't run eight times it run only once 
and if I go to my um, uh, my curated here actually uh, folder you can see that uh, yeah all the files are written over here it's using some by default partitioning that's why it's creating some blank files as well um, if I go to uh, yeah so and um, I go back to my uh, glue console and if I go to my tables you can see here uh, my curated table actually has got only first name and last name because remember our transformation was to use only first name and last name so the whole pipeline has worked though my ingestion job actually created eight files over here but if you look at the glue job my curated glue job runs run only one once and it simply process all those files in one go to the target location so that was all for the demo guys today uh, and the tutorial hope you like it and if you like please click on the like button please subscribe to my uh, channel um, if you have any feedback any comments uh, which is uh, like could be for a new uh, topic you want to discuss or um, want me to talk about or if you want to correct some of the mistakes I have done or if you want to discuss something related to design or architecture you can always write uh, uh, in the comment section of my YouTube channel and I always try to give your response as uh, soon as uh, possible so uh, look forward to your feedback and comments um, uh, yeah to make uh, these tutorials better uh, in the coming days uh, I promise to come back again in a week's time with uh, uh, another such tutorial. In the meantime, please stay safe and have a nice day. Bye-bye.